Hey, this is Mr. Masonette, and what we're going to do in this tutorial is just practice solving equations. So let's start with this example here. Now, notice that we have a variable on the left hand side of our equation and on the right hand side of our equation. And whenever this is true, what you need to do is consolidate those variables together. In other words, we're going to take one of the A terms and move it on the other side of our equation to combine it with the other A term. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take this negative 2a and we are going to move it to the left hand side of our equation by adding 2a on this side because this is negative 2a and this is positive 2a that cancels out to be nothing or zero so we are going to add 2a on the left hand side of our equation now what we're going to do now is bring down this minus 7 and we are going to add 3a and 2a which is 5a and we're going to bring down this minus 22. So notice what we did first is we moved this minus 2a over on the left hand side and we had to do the inverse in order to do that and we have two a terms which can be combined. Now remember for terms to be like terms they must be the same variable and they must be raised to the same power. Now although we don't see an exponent up here Remember, anything without an exponent is really the same thing as to the first power. So this is a to the first, and this is a to the first. So we have 3a to the first and 2a to the first. So when combining like terms, not only do the variables have to be the same, the exponents have to be the same as well. But we don't have any exponents in this example, so we're not going to worry about that so much. Now, what we're going to do is take this minus 22 and move it over to the right hand side. So we're going to take the inverse of that, which is plus 22, and write it on both sides of our equation. And that leaves us with positive 15 over on the right hand side. And on the left hand side, we have the product of 5 and a. Now, at this point, we should just know that a is going to equal 3 because 5 times 3 is 15. But let's just complete our work here by doing the inverse of multiplying by 5, which is to divide by 5. And we balance our equation by dividing the other side by 5 as well. So on the left hand side here, we have 5 divided by 5, or the coefficient divided by itself, which leaves us with positive 1. So we have positive 1a. And we don't have to write a 1 here because 1 times anything is that thing. For example, 1 times a would just be a. And then over on the right hand side, we have 15 divided by 5, which is 3. So for this equation, a equals 3. Now to check our answer, we would just substitute the variable a with 3 and check our work to make sure the left is equal to the right hand side of our equation. And if we do that, we would multiply 3 times 3, which would be 9 minus 22. And over on the right hand side, we would do negative 2 times positive 3, which is negative 6. And then we would subtract 7. And 9 minus 22 is equal to negative 13. And negative 6 and negative 7 is also equal to negative 13. So when checking your answer, you should get a true statement where you have the same value on the left as you do on the right to confirm your work. All right, let's go ahead and do another example. OK, once again, we have a variable on both sides of the equation. But notice on the left hand side, we have a set of parentheses with a number on the outside, which indicates multiplication. So what we have to do first is use the distributive property to rewrite our equation. So we have to multiply this 3 by each term inside our set of parentheses. So we have 3 times y, which is 3y. And then we have 3 times 4, which is 12. So we're going to write minus 12. All right. Actually, I like to look at this as negative 4. So I would say positive 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. And then we have to still subtract 6. And this right here is going to be equal to y. Now we can simplify the left-hand side of our equation a bit further. We have two like terms. The second term and the third term are constants. And constants are considered like terms. So we're going to combine minus 12 and minus 6, or shall we say negative 12 and negative 6, which would be negative 18. So we have 3y 
minus 18 equals y. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to take this y term over on the right and move it to the left and combine it with this y term. And then we're going to take this constant and move it over on the right hand side. So the coefficient of y is positive 1. So we would say the opposite of positive 1y would be negative 1y. And we have to subtract 1y from 3y, which leaves us with 2y. Now we still have this minus 18 over here, so I'm just going to drop it down. And on the right hand side, we don't have anything left, so we're going to write 0. And now we're going to take this minus 18 and move it to the right by adding 18. So what we have now is 2y equals 18. Now at this point, we know that our answer should be 9 because 2 times 9 is the only thing that will produce 18. But I'm going to go over here and just complete our work. So we're going to divide both sides by 2. And that would leave us with y equals 9. All right, let's go ahead and check our answer by plugging a 9 into our equation. So I'm going to rewrite this as 3 times 9 minus 4 minus 6 equals 9. So notice all I did is I took our equation and I rewrote it just as it is, except for I substituted the y with the number 9. All right, so now in the parentheses, we have 9 minus 4, which is 5. And I'm going to straight away just multiply 5 by 3, which would give us 15. And 15 minus 6 is, in fact, equal to 9. So we would say that our answer does indeed check out. All right, let's go ahead and do another example. All right, this equation definitely looks different than the first two. When you look at this equation, it looks just like a proportion. And what we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of our knowledge of proportions to solve this equation. Now, what we should remember about proportions is that when you cross multiply, those two products are always going to be equal to each other. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this by multiplying 4x minus 2 by 3. And we are going to multiply 2 by 3x plus 6. So let's start with 2 times 3x plus 6. So I'm just going to write 2 and then put 3x plus 6 in parentheses because 2 has to be multiplied by the entire sum here. And that will be equal to 3 times 4x minus 2. All right, now what we're going to do is simplify each side of our equation by using the distributive property. So we have two sets of 3x, which is 6x, and two sets of positive 6, which is positive 12. And that is equal to 3 times 4x, which is 12x, and 3 times minus 2, which is minus 6. All right, what we have to do now is take one of our x terms and move it to the other side of our equation. Now, if I were to take this positive 12x and move it to the left, we would have to make this negative 12x. And then over here, we would have positive 6x and negative 12x, which would give us negative 6x. And I don't want to deal with negative numbers, although I really don't mind, but I like to try to keep things positive whenever possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this positive 6x and do its inverse, which is negative 6x, and move that over on the right-hand side of our equation. So on the left, the x terms cancel out, leaving us with just 12 on the left. And on the right, we have 12x minus 6x, which is 6x minus 6. And then what we're going to do is we are going to take this constant, minus 6, and move it from the right over to the left-hand side of our equation. So we're going to add 12 to 6, which is 18, which is equal to 6x. 
Now at this point, we can just see that x equals 3 because 6 times 3 is the only thing that can produce 18. But let's just go ahead and show our work to completion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite what we have so far over here at the top. And some of you might be more comfortable with x being over on the left-hand side because maybe that's how you are taught or maybe you're just used to that, like it's a preference or something. And if you want the x to be over on the left, what you can always do is you can just take everything over on the right and just write it over on the left and everything on the left and just put it on the right. So you can just switch these two terms around because they really mean the same thing. Now, we're going to take this coefficient and divide it by itself on both sides. And that leaves us with x is equal to 3. And this time, I'm not even going to plug in my answer because I just know that the answer is going to be 3. However, if this was a test or something like that, I would advise if you have extra time to just go ahead and verify your results by substituting your answer in for the variable in the original equation. All right, let's go ahead and do one more example. All right, notice with this example, we have a fraction being added to another fraction, which is equal to another fraction. And what we need to remember is whenever adding fractions, we must have a common denominator. So let's go ahead and do that first. So the lowest common denominator of 3 and 5 is 15. So what I'm going to do is change this 3 to a 15 and this 5 to a 15 as well. Now this 3 here became 5 times bigger. So what we have to do is we have to take the quantity that we have up here for our numerator and increase that by a factor of 5. And everything on the bottom here on this side became 3 times bigger because 5 times 3 is 15. So we have to make this quantity 3 times bigger. So let's use a distributive property to multiply 5 times this right here. So we have 5a plus 5. And over on the right hand side we have the product of 3 and a minus 3. And that will be equal to 2 fifteenths. All right, now that we have a common denominator, remember when adding fractions, the denominator is going to stay the same. So we just need to write it one time. And all we really need to do is add our numerators together. So we have 5a plus 5 plus 3a minus 3. And that is equal to 2 fifteenths. All right. So what we're going to do next is we are going to simplify this numerator by combining like terms. So we have positive 5a here and positive 3a, which is positive 8a. And we have two constants here. We have positive 5 and negative 3. And 5 take away 3 is 2. So we're going to write plus 2. And our denominator is 15. And that is equal to 2 fifteenths. All right. Now, what we have here is something that looks like a proportion. So we are going to go ahead and cross multiply and rewrite our equation. So let's start with 15 times 8a plus 2. So we're going to take 15. And we are going to multiply it by 8a plus 2. And that is going to be equal to 2 times 15, which is 30. Now, what I'm going to do next, instead of using the distributive property here, is I'm just going to straight away divide this side by 15. So this can cancel out right away. And then I'm going to divide the other side by 15. And that leaves us with 8a plus 2 equals 30 divided by 15, which is 2. 
And now what I'm going to do is I am going to take this positive 2 and subtract it from both sides, which leaves us with 8a equals 0. And the only thing you can multiply 8 by to have a product of 0 is 0. So if we divide 8 by itself, okay, that's going to be 1. So that leaves us with 1a. And 0 divided by 8 is equal to 0. Hey, I just want to say thanks for checking out this math tutorial. Please don't forget to hit that subscription button and activate notifications so you can be informed as I upload new math tutorials that just might help you with your math homework. Until next time, this is Shane Masonette with Mason at Math.